Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. I wanted to do a quick review of some of the things we covered on uh, the Bob Lusk comments regarding Tesla going out of business if they uh, really try and implement electric batteries and do cars in the manner that they have done. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. If you get this, we stay from also on finance to ask which a me how ma. Today I wanted to do a review of a suggestion of Bob Lux of GM and made which is that there is a good likelihood that Tesla would go out of business if in fact they choose to try to um go in a mass scale to do um electric cars around the world. Um I'm kind of fascinated by his comments because he has worked or was a senior executive in one of the top country companies in the world when it comes to building cars and the numbers he's looking at are comparable when he was at GM were comparable to the numbers being looked at by um the other major ice manufacturing firms. So One of the interesting sort of parts of the dialogue is the fact that when you focus exclusively on the fact that he said Tesla would go out of business selling a um a $35,000 electric vehicle, um I have to say kind of technically he's right and here's what I mean. You'll notice that when Tesla introduced its first two vehicles, he said they were in that $600,000 cars. so a $50,000 battery pack and then a $20,000 car on top of that or a $25,000 car and then a $100,000 car could actually be profitable for the manufacturer of that the problem was how many people can afford a $100,000 car so the response that popped up was um was a fact that when GM introduced their $37,000 Bolt um my it's my understanding now from comments made by some of my viewers like you and others that GM was losing money on every car uh, it wasn't stated how much money that was um the sense was that they weren't losing $13,000 a vehicle like Chrysler but it was a greater than let's say 2000 less than $13,000 loss that GM was experiencing on that $37,000 Chevy Bolt. Um where I noticed that Bob Lust turned out to be right is the fact that if you have a $37,000 car and your battery is going let's say 20k of that there's not enough room there with your dealer uh costs with you know uh the $2000 for um uh warranty issues etc so that you add up all those numbers and there's a loss that's being incurred. So the point that Musk was or uh was being made by Bob Lutz was the fact that if you take that battery pack from that $100,000 car and put it in a $37,000 car, it results in you taking a lot of losses until you go out of business. So technically it turns out he's right. The problem with his analysis is the fact that when you come out with a battery like the 2170 and your costs instead of being 15,000 plus or $20,000 for that battery pack are let's say cut in half sub $10,000 you now are able to make money on a battery where your competitors are losing money on every uh car they sell so I'm fascinated by the fact that um you know there are all these questions about the bolt in terms of why is it not being uh released in Europe and so there where there's 4000 people waiting in line to buy one and the answer is that um they want to sell it in the United States because there's a benefit in terms of the pollution vehicles that they can sell against the profits there um they're making profits on large SUVs and the government allows them to lower their overall fuel rating um 
by them selling electric vehicles. So they can take that loss and kind of make up through the back door for that loss. And if you go to Europe with that product, you now take a loss without an offset. So therefore, the logic of the light sales in Europe where it's in heavy demand versus in the United States where the demand isn't as great uh, is there. Um, you know, this is a sidebar note to make, and that is that um, I've been told of 4,000 people in a waiting list in Norway and then all over Europe, people waiting to get the European version of the Bolt, unable to get their hands on one. And I've been fascinated by this because, um, you know, if you're testing the market as GM is, one would think they would make an effort to roll over there. Plus, GM also has a huge problem in the United States, which is negative brand recognition when it comes to what was done with the EV1. There are a lot of early adopters um, that are Tesla fans that won't give GM a shot because of uh, the bad treatment uh, electric owners received previously. So, um, you know, sort of the goal of this talk was to sort of jump into, you know, how and why GM is making a half-hearted effort on the Bolt. And uh, the response from the market, even though they're losing money, is that you have inventories piling up. We'll hear more about what the situation is uh, now that they're expanding sales beyond the starter three or four states that they started in. But I would not be surprised to see sales remain tepid and uh, you know, almost a, um, uh, a consumer rejection of the GM offer. Sort of my biggest shocker in this whole thing was that there were surveys done and allegedly Apple's is testing out the whole concept of electric vehicles. And I was stunned to find out that um, from a consumer standpoint and a brand awareness standpoint, Apple is actually considered a bigger threat to Tesla in, in the electric car market than GM is. Um, I was kind of shocked by that because obviously they don't have a car out yet, but the relationship that they have with customers as a brand is so high quality that consumers would be ready to buy uh, if Apple entered the marketplace with an electric vehicle. Um, I have to say that I don't see it happening anytime soon, unless it's a partnership of some sort. And the main reason is that um, the battery disadvantage they would be at would be huge. And I'm sort of thinking this, one of the talks that I'm gonna be doing is focused on the fact that Yes, there are a number of entities that are now in the battery build to be competitive uh, situation. What I'm not getting is um, how are these entities going to enter the marketplace with a battery formatting configuration that's Tesla competitive um, that is um, certainly going to embrace the Tesla patents uh, are being, that will be used by these folks but there are certain gaps in what Tesla has allowed them to see and understand that limits the effectiveness of competitors to come after Tesla. I'd say particularly in the thermal management system, but it'll be in other areas as well. And so I really see why Tesla has a five-year advantage. I really see why they can um, maintain that advantage. And it's amazing how wide open uh, the number of solution ideas that are available for them are. So, um, in summation, I just have to say that, um, again, I think Bob Lutz is right about Tesla losing money if they tried to put an 18650 battery in a $35,000 car, uh, Tesla would lose money on each car and then go out of business. So the fact that they can deliver using the 2170 a vehicle at the 35 price point, at least at the start, and make money on that means that uh, I just think it's, it's really bad news for the industry because um, you know how many losses or how much loss are large competitors willing to endure uh, prior to sort of waving the flag and deciding it's a bad idea and pulling out. So um, 
uh, Tesla really represents a challenging situation even for hundred years in business uh, manufacturers that are going after them. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please like and subscribe. Tschüss, macht's gut. Au revoir, à tout à l'heure. Lehitraud, Choda Hafez. And look forward to our next conversation.